So we're now like three weeks into the 2021-2022 NBA season. And obviously there are players who have been playing out of their mind. But there also has been players who have been playing absolutely terrible for their standard. For some reason a lot of NBA stars have been struggling to start the year. And a lot of guys who are thought of as just role players have been starting the season off playing like all stars. That has led me to make this video where I'll be discussing 7 NBA stars who have started the season struggling and I'll also be discussing whether or not I'm worried about the star or not going into the rest of the season. But before we get into the video, I ask you to drop a like on this video as it does help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want daily NBA content. Also if you want to help me reach my goal of 2000 subscribers. Also drop a comment on this video as I do respond to all of my comments and play that intro. But quickly before we get into the video, I gotta show you this really quickly. This is the new Diversion water bottle. It's basically a water bottle where you can put stuff like your keys, wallet, and other kind of small items like in your water bottle that will make you lose it way less. And it will also just help you to not have your pockets full and things like that. Click the link in my bio if you're interested and into the video. But before we get into the video, I ask you to drop a like on this video as it does help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want daily NBA content. Also, if you want to help me reach my goal of 2,000 subscribers, also drop a comment on this video as I do respond to all of my comments and play that intro. The first NBA star who has gotten off to a terrible start this season is Dame Lillard, who has probably been the worst out of all the players we're going to discuss. We all know Dame as a top three point guard in the league, a top 12 player in the NBA. We know him as a superstar level player who averages 27 or more points in his sleep while being one of the best shooters in the NBA. But so far this season, he's been absolutely terrible, averaging only 19 points and 8 assists so far, which isn't terrible. But the reason why I say he's struggling is because his efficiency has been pretty disgusting, as he's shooting 35% from the field and 23% from three, which is just terrible for any player, especially Damian Lillard, who's a guy who usually shoots around 43 to 45% from the field and 36 to 38% from three. To me, he clearly is just not playing like his usual self. He's playing like one of the worst starting point guards in the league right now and to be honest when you watch him play he's simply just missing shots that he would usually make Lillard is not a player who gets a lot of easy shots because a lot of his shots are off the dribble contested deep threes crazy layups and things like that and usually he hits them at an efficient clip that's why he's so good but this season he's simply just been missing way too much of those shots I think I even saw a stat somewhere about if like Lillard hits his next 40 shots in a row without missing a single one he still wouldn't even shoot 50% from the field which is really bad but to answer the question of whether or not I'm worried about Damian Lillard the answer is absolutely not we've seen him play at an elite all-star top five point guard level for nine years in a row I'm not gonna start worrying about him just off of less than 10 games but I am worried about Portland's future because it kind of seems like they're not gonna be good this season but regardless I still think he's a top three point guard in the league and I think he'll eventually just have that one game where he drops like 40 to 50 points reminds everyone how good he is and gets back on track the second all-star we have to talk about who has started the season absolutely terrible is definitely jason tatum in tatum's previous last few years he's been known as one of the most efficient scorers in the nba just a guy who's a top 15 player in the nba top five small forward but this season he honestly hasn't even been the boston celtics best player it's been jalen brown tatum is a guy who we expect to average over 25 points per game but so far this season he's only putting up 22 points points and eight rebounds in that time period and his efficiency just has been absolutely terrible he's shooting 37 percent from the field and 27 percent from three which is terrible efficiency i argue he'd actually be a detriment to the boston celtics because he's been very inconsistent tatum's a really ball dominant player and it seems like he, there's just multiple possessions where he's not really passing the ball at all even when he should he's just settling for some crazy difficult shots and usually tatum would hit those shots but he's hitting them at such an inefficient clip to where he's actually a negative for this team to answer the question of whether or not i'm really worried about tatum to be honest i'm really not that worried because tatum always starts the season off like kind of slow and he always has stretches of being really inefficient 
to be honest i think he's gonna get better but i am worried about the celtics overall because there's a lot of problems with this team that hasn't been fixed over the off season i still think he's gonna go back to his usual all-star self but i do think there is a chance that jalen brown could emerge as the best player on this team don't sleep on that the third nba star we gotta talk about who has started the season absolutely terrible is james harden harden's a guy who's like known as a top seven player in the nba one of the best scorers of all time guy who's always in mvp conversations basically the definition of an nba superstar him playing this terrible is definitely surprising he's usually a guy who definitely puts up over 25 points per game on very good efficiency but so far this season he's only been putting up 18.7 rebounds and nine assists which is in really bad numbers but when you like see that it's Harden you don't expect him to average less than 20 points per game and when you add in the fact that he's only shooting 39% from the field and 39% from three which is fine but overall from the field he's just not shooting well he's definitely not playing at the level he usually plays at and a lot of people are kind of just ignoring it to be honest a lot of people are trying to link James Harden struggles to like the change with like the free throw stuff and how you can't get those BS fouls anymore and Harden was literally the most notorious player for doing those type of things and although I do think it's like a big part of it probably the second biggest part I think the biggest reason why Harden is struggling is because he's just lacking aggressiveness there has been multiple games where Harden is shooting the ball less than 15 times and that simply shouldn't be happening Harden should be the shooting the ball closer to like 18 to 20 times a game he's kind of playing as if the Brooklyn Nets still have Kyrie Irving on the team if Kyrie was on the team I would understand why Harden is playing like this he just needs to be a playmaker give it to Kyrie and KD who are like permanently scorers and not playmakers but the Nets don't have Kyrie Irving which means they need James Harden to be his natural prolific self to be honest I'm not worried about James Harden at all he I think he just needs to get adjusted to like the fouling rule and I think he needs to be more aggressive and I think he'll go back to his usual self I'm not worried about him at all the fourth NBA All-Star who has been really struggling to start the season underratedly is Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic has always been one of the most underrated players in the NBA as a guy who's like a top 10 center in the league, guy who gave you 20 points and 10 rebounds on great efficiency. And obviously the Bulls have gotten off to an amazing start so far this season. That has caused a lot of people to really overlook how terrible Vucevic has been playing. So far this season, he's only been averaging 13 points and 11 rebounds, which isn't horrible stats. I wouldn't even be complaining if he's averaging that because maybe he's just getting adjusted to the team. They have way more offensive options and things like that. But he's been shooting a terrible 38% from the field and 28% from three. And you have to realize that Vucevic is literally a big man who does most of his scoring inside like the three-point line. Meaning most of his shots are somewhat close to the rim. And it's not like he's been shooting a crazy amount of threes. He's not even shooting that much. He simply has just been missing a lot of his shots around the basket. And to be honest, I think the reason for this is because he's never been on a team that's actually good with this much guys who could score the ball at a great level i don't think he's getting enough post touches and i think most of his points are gonna have to come off of offensive rebounds but to answer the question of whether or not i'm worried about him i'm not gonna lie i am a little worried about him because he's on a way different team in chicago that has just so much perimeter players and i feel like he's not gonna get the ball enough and he's not gonna be as effective as he usually is i feel like he's somewhat gonna be in that role of like kevin love like when he was with LeBron and Kyrie where LeBron and Kyrie are the perimeter scorers and in this case it's Levine and DeRozan then I think Vucevic is gonna have to just be like a spot up shooter and the guy who just gets rebounds and things like that I don't know if he's gonna be cool with that I don't know maybe he's just gonna like go back to his normal self maybe I'm like overthinking but I do think Vucevic will not put up the normal numbers he did in his all-star years I think he'll average somewhere around like 16 to 18 points for like 12 rebounds definitely not a bad center but but I don't think this is the season where he puts up his usual all-star numbers, but I still think he'll be good. The fourth NBA all-star who has been really struggling to start the season is Bradley Beal. Beal's been known as a guy who has one of the best scorers in the NBA. He's averaged over 30 points last season and was second in the league in scoring. Not only being one of the best scorers in the NBA, but he's also very efficient when it comes to it. And this season, the Wizards actually started the season off very stronger than you could have expected. They're not like 
playing great because of Bradley Beal. They're just playing good as an overall team. But if the Wizards were like going to start the season off on fire, you would have assumed it's because of Bradley Beal, but that hasn't been the case. So far this season, he's been averaging 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists, which definitely is not bad numbers. We look at his efficiency, he's been shooting absolutely horrible. Has he shooting 38% from the field and 24% from three, which is just not acceptable. To be honest, I don't really like know why he's struggling. I think he's just missing the normal shots he usually takes. He's also not being as ball dominant as he was the last two years because the Wizards added some more players who are good and will need the ball, such as Kyle Kuzma, Spencer Dinwiddie, and other players are getting bigger roles like Danny Advija. But I don't even think that's a big deal because Beal's one of the best off ball players in the NBA. I don't know the answer to the question. If I'm worried about Bradley Beal, I'm absolutely not worried about him. I still think he's going to be one of the best scorers in the NBA, still be an all star level player. But I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't average like close to 30 points per game, which is fine. But yeah, I don't think he's going to be like in contention for the scoring title. But I do think he'll average some around 23 to 25 points per game on way better efficiency than he's doing right now. The sixth and final NBA All Star we got to talk about when it comes to like to them starting the season off terribly is De'Aaron Fox. Fox is a guy who really broke out last season where he put up a crazy average of 25 points and 7 assists. You would have expected him to put up around the same numbers or maybe even show some improvement since he is a young player. But through the first 8 games of the season, he's only been putting up 18 points and 6 assists, which isn't horrible, but he's doing it on a terrible 38% from the field and a horrendous 90% from 3. Those are just not good numbers at all. I'm not going to lie, the main reason I think he's playing bad is because he's just missing the normal shots he takes. I don't really think there's anything crazy with Sacramento that's allowing him to not hit shots. Harrison Barnes and Buddy Hield have been their best players through the first 8 games. The thing about Fox is that although he did shoot well from three last season he's still a guy who you don't 100 percent believe in when it comes to his jump shot you definitely trust him more than you did to start his career but you still don't know so maybe there's a little fear of that his jump shot was like just a lucky season because we see with multiple other players like they have a great shooting season and then they can't have that same shooting season again for example like russell westbrook in his mvp season he was shooting like league average while taking a bunch of threes and we all know how bad he is of a shooter now but to be honest, I think Fox is going to go back to his overall play. But I am a little fearful of his jump shot that like it just doesn't come back. But I'm not ready to overreact yet. It's only been like eight games. I wish him good luck because he's like one of my favorite players in the league. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Let me know whether or not you think these NBA stars are going to pick up their game. Drop a like on this video to help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want daily NBA content. Also, if you want to reach my goal of 2,000 subscribers, also drop a comment on this video. As I do, respond to all my comments. And I'm out.